I saw this post in a Facebook group and it looked amazing. Not only the art was awesome, but the way it printed just didn't look like it should be possible. So keep watching and I'll show you where you can find it to print your own and you can see what the printing process is like. This Deadpool Wolverine lamp was posted on Maker's World, which is a print site for Bamboo Labs. I'll leave a link in the description where you can find it and check out all the other files he has listed there. Also, it would do me a huge favor if you could hit that like button for YouTube to send this video to more people. It really helps the channel grow. The file is set up for a Bamboo X1 Carbon in Bamboo Studio. So after downloading and opening the file, this is what it looks like. The first plate is the front image, and the other three plates are the different backings you can have. Uh, two are for hanging on the wall, and one is for sitting on a desk. Also, the eight filament colors are set up on the model, and uh, various other settings are predetermined. Even though this was set up for the uh, X1 Carbon, I was able to switch it to uh, P1P for my machine with no issue. The issue I did have is that I only have one AMS, meaning I can only do four colors automatically, so eight would have to be done by hand. I still could have done this with my P1P, but loading and unloading filament is a bit of a pain manually the way I have it set up on my rack. So I decided to try printing it on my Ender 3 V3. I haven't ran a real project on this yet, so I figured this would be a good test. Here I have the file in Orca Slicer. Loading the STL will bring in the meshes with random colors, so you just need to go in and adjust that. And then I deleted the backs that I didn't want. With my first attempt, I had a few issues with the Prime Tower that you'll see in the video but it was causing more problems than it was worth, so I stopped the print and started over with it turned off. Also in the settings, I enabled first layer filament sequence to custom, which makes it follow the order of the colors you have listed uh, above. But that's only for the first layer, which was very confusing, because after the second layer, it picked a random sequence, so I had to constantly be checking the slicer to see what was gonna print next before loading the next filament. Here's the eight colors I used. The outline in the base is a flat black, and then the other black is just a normal PLA. I think it would have been better if I could have found a dark gray for that, but uh, I didn't have it, so that's what I went with. I decided to load the filament directly into the print head to make uh, the switching easier, so I bypassed the runout sensor by just sticking a piece of filament in it. So with everything set up now, let's watch the print. Let me know in the comments if you have experience with uh, manual color switching and uh, let me know what works best for you. Switching colors was pretty easy once they stopped using the prime tower. Just retract, change color, extrude, and resume. I was really amazed of how good this looked. It goes without saying though, you need a perfect first layer for it to work. 
now printing the back and the Ender 3 is laying down the matte black PLA really smooth. The texture from the bed isn't this pronounced in real life. The camera's really adding a lot of highlights to it. Uh, here's a little example of what's going to look like lit up. Taking another look at the back plate, I dare say it's perfect. There's really no flaws in it at all. I have some of these white LED strips left over from another project, so I just need to cut them into strips and then stick them to the back. These LED strips are covered in silicone to make them waterproof, which isn't necessary for this project. So I have to try to cut the ends off so I can get to the soldering points, which is a real pain. If anybody knows a better way of doing this, uh, please leave it in the comments. After fighting with a few of the strips, I just decided to strip off all of the silicone just to make it easier. Now I just need to tin all the connections and attach some wires. I don't really trust the tape on the back of these LED strips to last, so I'm just putting some dabs of CA glue to make sure they stay in place. The back just has a square hole for the wires to come out, so I printed this adapter that'll fit that hole and then take a round barrel plug. I forgot to record uh, soldering all the wires together, but it's just the same as what I'm doing now with the uh, power connectors. After soldering, I'm adding some liquid tape to insulate the connections. And that's it. Here's the results. If you're interested in seeing more about the Ender 3, check out this video here. Or if you want to see some videos about how to smooth your 3D prints, uh, you can check out this playlist. Thanks for watching.